Have you seen the headlines that you can eat meat to prevent getting dementia? Well, I haven't seen those headlines either, but it might be surprising because a new study is suggesting exactly that. In a new study, they found that the people who ate more meat had less risk of developing dementia. So why aren't we seeing the headlines? And can we really interpret this study in this way? I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and I love studies like this as much as I hate them. And that sounds like a strange statement, but let me clarify. This is a nutritional epidemiology study. And as we've said before here at Diet Doctor, this is sort of the lowest quality of evidence that exists. It really doesn't tell you much about whether the association you're finding is a true association or not. There are so many confounding variables, and this study is no different. But what this study does show is the opposite of what is believed to be true in traditional medicine. And that's probably why it's not getting big headlines, because it's opposite against the uh, traditional belief or the common narrative. So that's why I think it's worth exploring. So let's take a look. This is um, an analysis of the UK Biobank study. So this was you know, one of these enormous studies of over 500,000 people. Um, and you just follow them over time. They were enrolled between 2006 and 2010, and they all fill out a food frequency questionnaire, you know, 47 items. Um, what do you eat? How often do you eat it? And then you get asked again, you know, a number of years later. Very poor data quality. You know, it's sort of the best you can do in these huge trials like this, but it's poor data. Um, and they follow them over the time, and then they, for this particular analysis, they said who got dementia, who didn't, who got Alzheimer's, who got vascular dementia, and then try to correlate it with what they ate. And their conclusion was processed meat had an association with increased risk of dementia, whereas unprocessed meat had an association with a decreased risk of dementia. And in fact, their words were that unprocessed meat appears to be protective. I think that's a bit of a stretch based on this epidemiology, low quality studies, but that was sort of their interpretation, but there was a definite association, but let's unpack this a little bit more. So first let's talk about the baseline characteristics, right? This is the most important place to start and where you frequently see these huge differences um, or significant differences in these nutritional epidemiology studies. And what they found was those people who had, who ended up getting dementia were older, they were a lower socioeconomic class. They were less educated, they were more likely to smoke, they were less physically active, and they were more likely to have a family history of dementia. So kind of no surprises there, right? We, we would expect that to be the case, and many studies have shown that to be the case. And many studies have shown that to be, be the case that those characteristics correlate with processed meat consumption as well, right? So that's also not a surprise, and that's what sets up this healthy user bias problem. Um, or unhealthy user bias, depending on where you look at it. You can try to control for smoking, you can try to control for physical activity, but there's no way you can control for just how healthy people are and how they live their lives. You can't, it's, it's impossible to control for that. Um, so are you just picking up this, you know, co-founding variable as healthy user bias, or are you picking up a real effect? Well, now the next question is though, how do you define processed meat? Because processed meat can be huge, um, variable as well. And this I, this, I found this interesting, bacon, ham, it was in the UK, so meat pie is also in there, and chicken nuggets. Now, when I think of processed meat, I don't think of chicken nuggets. I think of chicken nuggets is what like, you know, kids, kids eat, but do grownups still eat chicken nuggets? I guess maybe they do, all the breading and the flouring. So what that shows is processed meat is far more than just the processed meat, right? It's whatever comes in it. It's the fillers, it's the sugar, it's the soy, it's the breading, it's all this other stuff that comes with the processed meat. So that's also an important consideration that not all processed meat is the same, right? There are definitely versions of much cleaner processed meat that has few, if any, additives in it. So again, a big variable. So there was an association between eating the processed meats and a higher risk of, of dementia. Now, what, again, it wasn't high in the scheme of things, right? To really, in a nutritional epidemiology study like this, it should be above a hazard ratio of two to really get your attention. And these were in like the one, three to one, four ranges. So not very high, not really all that dramatic, but there was an association. But then they looked at the unprocessed meat and it was uh, about 0.8 uh, so 20% reduction, again, not a dramatic difference in this type of study, but 
It is the opposite of what people think. So one of the way these nutritional epidemiology studies can be really helpful is that if you have to overcome the healthy user bias or unhealthy user bias, you already have to overcome that and you show us association to a benefit. In my mind, that pretty much eliminates any call, any, any chance that there's a harm, right? Because could there be a harm for eating red meat if, um, less healthy people at baseline are eating red meat and they still have a lower risk of getting dementia? Like how could the red meat be contributing to a worse scenario, a worse outcome in any scenario there? And, and the, I think the answer is no. So, um, that's what I find so interesting. You know, if this, if this study had showed that eating red meat was associated with a higher risk of dementia, I think we'd see a lot more headlines. That's my personal opinion, right? There, that's not science-based. That's my opinion. But I think we'd see a lot more headlines about red meat causes dementia. Instead, we're seeing processed meat causes dementia. We're not seeing red meat prevents dementia because that would be an equally poor and inaccurate conclusion, but equal equal to the processed meat causes dementia. They're the same conclusion, the same strength of conclusion, both of which are very, very weak. So anyway, uh, hopefully I'm not rambling too much, but I wanted to use this, and, and I don't want to go into more specifics of this study. It's a very poor quality study that can help maybe generate some hypothesis, but not any real conclusions. Um, so it, but it does point out the weakness of this type of study. It points out the, um, I guess the biases with how people present it, right? I'm excited about this study because it fits my bias. Okay. Some people might say that. And I think that's a fair assessment, just like some people are ignoring this study because it doesn't fit their bias. Both are sort of, you know, equal statements. So, um, be cautious about these nutritional epidemiology studies, be cautious about interpreting them, whether you believe the results are true or not based on your biases. Try to focus on the science. And when it comes to these studies, the science is almost always weak. It does not prove causation. And there are so many confounding variables, whether it's the healthy user bias or whether it's, you know, comparing chicken nuggets to the cleanest, no additive bacon, you know, are those equivalent? No, definitely not. Or the, you know, the venison jerky with no additives compared to chicken nuggets or compared to a sausage that's full of sugar and fillers, um, and you know, those are just not equal. So it, it makes it confusing. And I know we like things simple and it helps to have simple answers, but nutrition's not simple. We got to be honest. And, and studies that try to make it simple, that try and combine too many things aren't doing you any good. And they're not doing science any good. They're not helping further our scientific knowledge in a meaningful way. So I hope this was helpful to give you the perspective about these nutritional epidemiology studies in general, and certainly this one in, spe in specific. Um, you know, eating meat has no association with dementia. Um, just like when you really look at the data, it, it has very little, if any, meaningful association with, with cancer or with heart attacks um, or strokes or other, uh, or diabetes or other poor health outcomes. The, the strength of the data simply, simply isn't there. Um, anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Please click the, the thumbs up for a like and hit the subscribe button. Leave us a comment. We love to hear from you. And we want to mark, make sure you get all the future updates from Diet Doctor News here on YouTube. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.